So a few years ago, I took a look at the Loop Deck Live. It was the first time I had ever been introduced to it. And I instantly fell in love with it. I did a video on it, if you guys remember that. I started using it every single day when I was streaming more regularly. I preferred it over the Elgato Stream Deck. I preferred it over all the other types of similar devices that I had used in the past for a multitude of reasons. But it's back, baby, and it's back better than ever. Since I last talked about this thing, there have been a number of big requests from the community, and Loop Deck was finally just like, I grant you all the things you wish for. And now we have a Streamlabs desktop plugin for the Loop Deck software. Full seamless integration with Streamlabs and Loop Deck, finally. Also, there's now a miniature Loop Deck, a mini Loop Deck, look! It's the Loop Deck Live S, and it's, it's smaller, it's cuter, and it's more affordable than the full-size Loop Deck Live. This was a, a high barrier to entry, was, was the cost of this thing, the price of this thing, which is around 260, 270 right now. This is sub $200, a complete master control console for your desktop um, for under 200 bucks. So that's gonna be appealing to a lot of people. And uh, the Loop Deck software has just come a long way since I last worked with it. Not that it was terrible to begin with, but it just wasn't the most intuitive. There was a learning curve, and they've done away with that completely. It's just so easy to use now. The drag and drop, everything is, is really my jam. So we'll be taking a closer look at all that stuff later today. What do you mean later today? Like right now, like right, right now, after this ad. Before we continue, thanks to AliExpress for sponsoring this video. Get ready for the biggest shopping event of the year because AliExpress is back with its biggest sale ever. It's the best time to shop on AliExpress starting from November 11th to the 17th, where you'll find great deals on awesome hardware like the MSI RTX 4060 Ti Ventus 3X for just 375. Upgrade your desktop PC with this snappy new GPU or browse the rest of the site's gaming gear with unbeatable prices and trusted customer reviews. Just remember that quantities are limited and these deals won't last forever, so act fast. Still not convinced? Use the coupon code shown here to get a whopping $25 off your $100 purchase from November 11th to the 17th. Oh yeah! Don't miss out. Click on the link in the description to start browsing the best deals of the year on AliExpress. Now back to the main video. Okay, so we've got our two Loop Deck Lives side by side. We have the Live and the Live S on the left. And uh, just a quick hardware comparison. Wanted to just let you guys know the key hardware differences uh, between each of these. Obviously, you're going to get more dials and buttons on the full-size loop deck than you will on the Live S. Uh, that's why it's also higher priced. You also get the, uh, the bars, the swipe bars or dial bars that uh, give you little indicators uh, as to what each of these dials do. It's fully programmable, of course, but you can also swipe them to navigate to other dial pages that allow you to add even more functions to the same knobs. Uh, you have a similar thing with the Loop Deck Live S. However, the, uh, it uses these two touch buttons that are just adjacent to these two dials. Anytime you start adjusting the dial, it'll change that touch button next to it uh, to whatever symbol that you've, symbol or text that you've uh, assigned to it in order to tell you exactly what it's controlling. And you can also swipe these two buttons up and down to go to different uh, dial pages as well. It kind of just functions as its own swipe bar. And as you can see, we've got six analog dials on the Live versus just two on the Live S but the dials on both devices can be pressed inward, so that's an additional button that you get. You've got eight uh, physical buttons on the Live and four on the Live S, but one area where the Live S has the full-size device beat is with its touch buttons. We've got 15 touch buttons that are visible at a time on the Live S versus just 12 on the Loop Deck Live. So uh, depending on your needs and budget, that's uh, going to be a factor. Both consoles have USB-C ports in roughly the same position in the top left corner. And then we also get uh, included stands, but the stands are not adjustable. This is something that I commented on in the first Loop Deck video years ago. And I was like, I wish that the stands were adjustable just to avoid any kind of glare. You know, obviously you want to place these in the most ergonomic spot available, but if that happens to interfere with lighting and glare and reflections, then it could be uh, kind of a nuisance. I, I will say that um, these are slightly different inclines. You've got a steeper incline with the Loop Deck Live S than you do with the Live. You can see it's actually pushed up a bit more and the Live is a bit flatter. I do prefer the incline of the Live S because it's not aimed as directly at the ceiling. Again, there's less reflection and glare that it's picking up from uh, ceiling lights. And then also the icons or the, uh, the buttons and dials just seem to be facing me a bit more as opposed to pointing more up as they are with the Live S. It's a slight difference, but a notable one for me personally. All right, let's go ahead and fire up the, the, the Loop Deck Live S and see what it can do. 
All right, we are chilling in the loop deck software right meow. And before we get into anything else, I want to quickly just recap from the first video, because it's been a long time, exactly how loop deck is structured, how this device is structured and how it all works. So for example, we've got our loop deck live S it's detected in the software. That's good. And then you've got profiles. You've got different profiles that reflect different applications. So we've got a profile for After Effects, one for Premiere, for Illustrator, Photoshop. There's Streamlabs, our star of the hour. And within each profile, you also have workspaces that you can create. So for example, uh, I'll show you the Premiere profile that I've set up personally in, in just a bit, but let's say you have a Premiere profile. You could have a number of different workspaces within said profile. For example, editing, color correction, audio, and so forth. So it's just a, a really a neat way to organize all of your different functions and commands. So we're gonna start off with the Streamlabs profile, and this is completely custom by yours truly. I, I built this out, uh, spent 12 hours just playing with this device. It's actually really fun uh, to get it just how you want it. First thing you'll see is, is that these buttons are RGB. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. What the frick? One thing I want to say is that we've got RGB buttons. We've got physical buttons on here that are RGB. You can actually assign different colors to each one. Oh, that's my fart button. If you press this, it does a fart noise. I don't have speakers plugged in right now, but that's that's my sound effect. That was the last thing I programmed on this page. I was like, I already have everything I need. This is more than enough. Let's just put a fart noise there. Anyway, you can color coordinate these however you like. So you can see right there, boom, gives you a nice little uh, color palette there. Boom, change it to whatever you desire. And this is actually really handy. It's not just for pure cosmetics or customization, it's for practicality. So for example, um, there's a page that you might have a bunch of like platform specific like Twitch commands and you can program that physical button to be purple to remind you that this is where all the Twitch stuff is. So things like that can be really useful. Um, this is also a feature that's available on the full size Loop Deck Live. At a glance, you can see all the frequently used buttons that I would need for streaming. For example, uh, toggling the stream on and off, just going live and broadcasting, recording. We've got a viewer count. So there's also help helpful widgets that can give you information to help you monitor your stream and other things, other programs, uh, creating a clip. We've got, uh, these are my multimedia functions for uh, like Spotify, if I have Spotify or some other um, player in the background playing music while I stream. And then all my scenes at the bottom here, um, you've got uh, just a really easy time switching scenes, um, enabling and disabling uh, sources, making them more visible. I even have a slow mode for chat. And at the bottom, you can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This represents our different touch pages. So if I swipe over, boom, there's touch page number two with a bunch of new buttons that I can uh, just have right at my fingertips, different launchers, all my game clients. I've got websites that I always use or frequently use when I'm streaming. And you can do macros and stuff too. You can do uh, keyboard shortcuts. You can also do multi-action. So under the actions tab, uh, you can see under custom, there's an option for multi-action macros. If I click that, you can add just a, a multitude of actions at once. Um, so for example, when I click this, this green button, it launches Streamlabs, four or five different websites like YouTube, Twitch, Twitter or X, and it also uh, runs a bunch of programs that I need for streaming as well. So that's all from one click and you can program that very easily with the multi-action function there. Everything else underneath this custom icon, these are all the plugins. So you've got one that's just standard for your desktop, your, your operating system for Windows. Um, there's one for Spotify Premium. You've got um, Streamlabs, of course, all of these different uh, scenes that are that you see right here, be right back, gaming, just chatting. These are all directly imported from uh, from Streamlabs. I set all this up in Streamlabs and then because of the plugin, the, the new Streamlabs plugin, it's just automatically populated here within the Loop Deck software, just making it super easy for me to uh, just assign different buttons and, uh, and different dials. I just hit a button that uh, opened up Reddit. I, I hit the Reddit button, sorry about that. But it's just become incredibly convenient for anyone who streams using Streamlabs, OBS, that sort of thing. Um, it's just got that native API dialed in, baby. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is the dial pages. So if we go back to the first one, I just, I don't actually have all nine of these touch pages filled out. I just wanted to show you guys how much you can cram in here. And this is just, mind you, this is just one workspace. You could have you could have a, a multitude of other workspaces that each have nine touch pages. It's just, it's almost limitless. It's crazy. But you can do the same thing with the, the dial pages. Yeah, you can do 10 dial pages. That would be 
20 different functions that you could assign to these two dials, um, which is pretty insane. What else do I have on these touch pages? Oh yeah, I've got my, this is my sound effects, all my sound effects. And I got these actually from the Loop Deck Marketplace. So the Marketplace is great because it can, it can give you a bunch of things where you can download for free or buy certain things like sounds, like sound effects or, or new plugins. You can just download new plugins. There's so much to choose from. Um, I even got a, uh, my, my overlay, my stream overlay through here and it works great, it looks great. Um, here's a here's a shot of it. See this the starting screen. See this just chatting stuff. Like this is all this was just downloaded from the the Loop Deck Marketplace. So yeah, for plugins, there's just a bunch of stuff here. InDesign, DaVinci Resolve, which is super popular. We've got Slack, PowerPoint, Audacity, PowerDirector, Nuke, Blender. Um, we've got I icon packs. Lots of icon packs. I, I downloaded some of those um, just to you know make it look nice and, and fancy, however you like it. Bit of customization options there, sound packs, the stream overlays I was just mentioning, emotes and badges uh, and presets and styles and a bunch of other stuff. So the marketplace is actually uh, pretty sweet. Just allows you to um, expand the functionality and uh, and the customizability of, of your device. So I mean, clearly this new plugin is a total game changer for anyone who streams with Streamlabs, but let's go ahead and take a look at Premiere Pro. Now this is another custom profile that I built for Premiere. I use Premiere all the time. That's what I use for editing. Check that shit out. Pretty sick. I got the Nyan Cats all around. Um, just like, yeah, it supports GIFs and stuff. So some of the icon packs that you, you get are actually GIFs and they're animated. You can just upload your own if you want to. I feel like customizable GIFs and LCDs and stuff are all the rage these days, with, especially with like AIO liquid coolers and stuff. It's just gone insane. But I thought this was a fun way to just fill up some otherwise blank black space. Uh, and this is also another example of uh, workspaces. So again, we're in the Premiere Pro profile and you can see I've got three workspaces here that I'm working with, editing, color, and audio. So if I tap the color, bada bing, bada boom, I've got a few uh, options. And there's actually more functionality going on here than you think because uh, these are all dial functions and I've got four dial pages. So the first page is exposure and contrast. So I'm already on page one. If I turn that, you can see exposure, contrast. If I wanna switch to highlights and shadows, I just click highlights and shadows, or I could even swipe Right, I can use that as the swipe bar. And now I've got highlights and shadows. This is infinitely faster and more convenient than using your mouse to click and drag each of these um, each of these parameters. Like it's, it's just, it works. It just works. You can go back, this is my home button. So this takes us back to the home page and then you've got editing. Uh, this is uh, all my editing tools. And this was also using one of those custom icon packs that I downloaded from the marketplace we just looked at. So you can see it just looks a bit fancier, more, more uh, personalized to me and my tastes. I will say, I don't know if this is the right time in the video to say it, but I do think that the Loop Deck Live S is perfectly fine. It's going to fit the needs of 85% of people. And I think especially for the budget, for the price, I would say it's the better value option of the two. So I do think that if you're a little bit more pressed for cash uh, and your budget's tighter that the Loop Deck Live S, it's not like you're gonna be sacrificing a whole lot. If you have money and um, it's, it's not really that much of an extra cost to you, then the standard Loop Deck Live is what I'd recommend just because it does have uh, those extra just physical dials there ready to go. Um, it is a bit more convenient and it's got those uh, the swipe bars as well, um, which are helpful. Any of you Loop Deck owners out there, I'd love to hear what you guys think about the device and how it's been working out for you. If you love it, you hate it, you use it every day, you returned it, whatever, please let me know in the comments. I'm very curious uh, to hear your thoughts. And uh, for me personally, it's just been a huge time saver. It's been uh, a great way to help me streamline my workflow when it comes to editing particularly, uh, and very much for streaming when I was streaming back in the day. Um, I haven't streamed in a long time, but if I ever get back to it, I will definitely be firing up the Loop Deck once again for that as well. Um, I think that's pretty much all for this one, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Yeah, uh, toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it, get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see y'all in the next one.